This place just keeps going downhill, and, and I don't need to spend my time here. Fed up with congressional dysfunction, Colorado Republican Ken Buck is now leaving this month instead of at the end of 2024. His departure means the Republicans can spare just two votes on legislative matters before needing Democrats to govern. And on his way out, Buck is trying to bury Lauren Boebert. As Newsweek reports, Lauren Boebert gets put in terrible position. More on her in a moment. It is the, the worst year of the nine years and three months that I've been in Congress. Um, and having talked to former members, it's the worst year in 40, 50 years. What's made it so difficult? You really need me to say that. <laughs> you, you need me to explain what's so difficult about this place. I was, um, as you see, the number three in the seniority on that committee, and I asked questions last. In addition to getting belittled this session by Jim Jordan and other Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee, Buck also spoke about the GOP's extremism. How we try to impeach somebody for a, a difference in policy. We've taken impeachment and we've made it a, a social media issue as opposed to a, a constitutional concept. Um, th th this place just keeps going downhill. I can't say it better than him, and he is frustrated, obviously, with his own party. And it doesn't seem like Speaker Johnson knew this was coming. Uh, I, was, I was surprised by Ken's announcement. I'm looking forward to talking with him about that. Did you know about Trump not supporting I didn't know. TikTok bill? He was blindsided, as was Steve Scalise, the number two in the House GOP leadership. Wow. Ken Buck has not been happy for a long time. Uh, and it kind of reflects um, the sort of radicalization of somebody in Ken Buck who, you know, came to some level of prominence running as a Tea Party candidate uh, in 2010. But now, 14 years later, even a Tea Party Republican is not extreme enough to be accepted by the MAGA Trump GOP. This is going to mean big problems for Speaker Johnson, especially when you look at what's on the docket, when they have to fund the government, they're trying to do it in a partisan way, and they have that aid bill sitting out that the Senate passed to Ukraine, to Israel, to Taiwan, that they're also trying to do in their own way. Every single vote counts here, and certainly this is bad news bears for Speaker Johnson. You already had announced that you were going to not run for re-election. Why leave now and leave a vacancy in an already very narrow majority for your party? Yeah, because it's it, to me it's important to get in the mix of this uh, election cycle and start talking about the issues that people recognize are, are such a problem right now. And one of those radicalization issues in Colorado, Buck has reportedly told Associates, is Lauren Boebert. The MAGA Republican facing a tough re-election in the 3rd District recently announced she was switching to Buck's 4th District for the general election to try and fill his seat in November. This is the right move for Colorado, for us. But Buck, by leaving now, is forcing, under Colorado law, a special election in the 4th Congressional District this June. If Lauren Boebert were to enter that election, she would have to give up her third district seat, which she wanted to keep until the end of the year. And if she gave up her current seat, the GOP House majority for at least a few months would shrink even more. And there would be no guarantee that Lauren Boebert would even win the 4th Congressional District special election. In a post on social media, Boebert wrote, Ken Buck's announcement yesterday was a gift to the Uniparty. The establishment concocted a swampy backroom deal to try to rig an election on winning by 25 points. Forcing an unnecessary special election on the same day as the primary election will confuse voters, result in a lame duck congressman on day one, and leave the 4th District with no representation for more than three months. The 4th District deserves better. I will not further imperil the already very slim House Republican majority Majority by resigning my current seat and will continue to deliver on my constituents' priorities while also working hard to earn the votes of the people of Colorado's 4th District who have made clear they are hungry for a real conservative. In other words, Lauren Boebert will skip the special election but run in the GOP primary on June 25th. Boebert is betting that whoever wins the special election will not be a potential general election opponent in November. The fact is, any incumbent, even one elected for a short term, has certain advantages in running to hold on to a seat. But Lauren Boebert, by contrast, has long been a source of controversy. Lauren Boebert is on the panel, moron in chief. Is she a moron? No, I do not think she's a moron. If hammers are the cause of more death than firearms, then maybe we need to start having background checks on hammers. I mean, look out, Black & Decker. Liberal hacks are at it again with their phony Lauren Boebert is so dumb hashtag. Colorado's Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert repeatedly yelled from the House floor trying to interrupt President Biden during his speech. We have a resident in the White House who has embarrassed our country. Her surveillance video revealed that she was indeed vaping, as well as she and her companion 
explicitly groping each other repeatedly while they oh were in God. their seats. The congresswoman, a mother of four and a grandmother. First of all, um, what happened is I messed up. Uh, I went on a date night and I am a congresswoman and a public figure, but believe it or not, I'm human too. They just closed it. They closed it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shoot. That was a frustrated Lauren Boebert scrambling but missing the debt ceiling vote. The yeas are 314, the nays are 117. The bill is passed. The Colorado Republican had been a leading opponent of the deal, and her absence created embarrassing headlines. Lauren Boebert didn't turn up to vote on debt ceiling deal she furiously campaigned against. Hey, everyone. I am back in Colorado, but let's talk about D.C., no excuses. I was ticked off. They wouldn't let me do my job, so I didn't take the vote. You notice the hat turned backwards? It symbolizes Boebert's view of reality. Um, I went to get um, birth control, and um, I was there at the counter and went to pay for it, and um, the, the price was very, very high. I said, wow, is this a three, six-month prescription? No, ma'am, this is one month. And I said, it's cheaper to have a kid. And I left it there, and now I have my third son, Caden Bobert. Um, did you or did you not decriminalize public urination in no, Washington, D.C.? Did you lead the charge to do so? No, it, the revised criminal code left that as a criminal charge. Did you lead the charge to decriminalize public urination in Washington, D.C.? No, ma'am. Thank you. Conversations to the back. Off the floor. The House parliamentarian tried to restore order, but Republicans Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert kept on fighting. And according to the Daily Beast, Marjorie Taylor Greene called Lauren Boebert a little bitch on the House floor. Order, please. Eyewitnesses reported the full dialogue included this. Boebert, I don't like the statements you've made about me publicly. Greene, well, you copied my articles of impeachment. Boebert, I haven't even read your impeachment resolution. Green. I've donated to you, I've defended you, but you've been nothing but a little bitch to me, and you copied my articles of impeachment after I asked you to co-sponsor them. Bobert, okay Marjorie, we are through. Green, Lauren, we were never together. I think that people would love if I would tone it down, but you know, we, we had um, our, our Lord Jesus that certainly didn't tone it down for anyone. Hmm. As for Ken Buck, the outgoing 4th District Colorado Congressman says he will not get involved in the primary or Colorado's 4th District special election. But that's because he doesn't have to. By getting out now, Buck is making the already embattled Lauren Boebert go through a few more hoops and overcome a few more obstacles in her effort to stay in Congress. Moderate Republicans and some Democrats are calling Buck's maneuvering brilliant. And they say it's underscored by Lauren Boebert's anger and frustration. By the way, Lauren Boebert's MAGA conservative colleague Andy Biggs of Arizona was recently caught off guard by a Republican caller on C-SPAN. I register as a Republican uh, because I'm a conservative, and I'm going to vote for Joe Biden because I'm a Christian. Thank you for listening. Mm, check out that video at the link below. It generated a lot of comments on YouTube. One of the most popular is from Shep1948, who wrote, Biggs should be indicted for his part in the Capitol insurrection. On that point, Biggs is one of four Republicans who refused to comply with a subpoena from the January 6th Special Select Committee. It's what you might call consciousness of guilt. Anyway, I look forward to reading your comments about Lauren Boebert getting twisted and screwed over by fellow Colorado Republican Ken Buck. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.